Hey guys. Hola. And that's the extent of the Spanish that I'm going to speak today. Uh, thanks for coming on uh, Friday morning. Um, my name is Mark Lark, and I'm the Senior Vice President uh, and General Manager of the CBS Interactive Tech Brands. And um, today I'm going to speak English because it's the language I'm the most comfortable with. It's, it's the language that uh, I feel more effective communicating in, and um, it's my authentic language. And it's that authenticity that I want to talk about today. Um, <clears throat> because the Spanish language uh, effort that we, that we did at, at CNET um, was, was really focused on building a, a tremendous brand. CNET is the world's leader in consumer information and technology. And at CNET, building a Spanish language brand uh, made a lot of sense to us. Um, the US Hispanic population uh, actually outnumbers the general population as it relates to uh, smartphone adoption, with 72% actually having more than one. And they watch 62% more video on that, on that platform. So it just made sense to us. But we saw a lot of our competitors, or some competitors and some non-competitors, actually publishing in Spanish language technology already, and, uh, but not really registering on the radar. And so for us, we wanted to understand how best to do that, how, how best to, to make an impact. And we knew at, at CNET that if we, we understood four basic things, that we could do it really right. If we understood the audience and were real with the audience, if we understood the platforms and the nature of those platforms uh, as it relates to distribution, if we could understand what the basic rules were, and if we could understand the, and be prepared for the velocity of change. And we knew that if we could if we, could, if we could address each one of those and embrace them authentically, that we'd have a chance at building a really good and lasting brand. So the first one that we focused on was being real with the audience or being authentic. Content, the human touch, is important in how you relay information through content. Now, CNET is an expert in technology, and technology is not a luxury item anymore. Technology is much more... Uh, a real part, it's like a, it's a human lifestyle connector, if you will. But technology is actually a complex language with its own vernacular that's difficult to understand for many people who's, whose first language is English, made more complex for people whose first language isn't English. And technology is touching us in so many different ways now, and it's touching so many different people, um, that <clears throat> it's very interesting to try to figure out how do we make technology relevant where it's touching those people? And for us at CNET, it made sense to look at our uh, authority in Spanish, I mean in, in English, and see how it translated into the Spanish language audience. We'd had this 20-year history in publishing uh, English language content and authority in, um, in technology, and we wanted to transition that in, into Spanish in an authoritative and, and real way. And so being real with the audience was a key part of, of achieving that goal. Um, in addition to being real with the audience, we, we really needed to figure out the distribution platform and have an uninterrupted experience. So in order to have that uninterrupted experience, we needed to make sure that we were, uh, we were addressing all, all different platforms. And for instance, we needed to make sure that we couldn't just, we knew that we do, couldn't just take the CNET English language side and put it wholeheartedly into the Spanish language effort. We knew that people would expect CNET to speak with some authority about technology, but beyond that, we knew that people would expect seen it to be authentic in the way that it addressed the Spanish language community. <clears throat> and it, we knew that they would expect that authenticity to also be uh, distributed on platforms and environments where they wanted to get that information. In some cases, that meant that we had to address a different way that we, the different kind of content that we produced. So for instance, 
in the US Hispanic communities, the BlackBerry is still an effective tool. It's very popular, but it barely registers on the radar in the English language. And so we knew that we couldn't just take BlackBerry content from the English language and put it into a Spanish language environment because we didn't have that BlackBerry content. So we knew that if we were gonna have a Spanish language brand, we had to actually invest in content creation around, say, BlackBerry in this instance. But content creation in areas where we weren't necessarily content creating on the English language side. And in some cases it meant that we actually had to, <clears throat> we had to address the distribution platform that we were on. So for instance, younger US Hispanics are actually more apt to engage with a browser on a gaming platform than they are on a tablet or a laptop. And so we had to make sure that we were addressable in those kind of different environments. And in some cases it meant that we needed to look at our distribution partnerships differently and we needed to look for environments that were different than we were used to putting content in uh, on the English language side. And so for instance, we put a bunch of how-to video at the point of purchase in Target stores so that those consumers who were coming through and buying consumer electronics in Target could say, hey look, Here's a CNET brand. We're here to help you get the most out of your technology. So we've really made an effort on having an uninterrupted experience and being, uh, being focused on being where the users wanted to be and then reaching them in environments that were comfortable for them, even if, they weren't, even if we didn't have the experience in them on the English language side. And that helped us go from zero to two million in one year. And so we had the authenticity part. We had being real with the audience. And then we also had the uninterrupted experience but then we knew that we had to be prepared for uh, what the rules were. So what were the, what were the basics? Now CNET's a 20-year-old digital company with a lot of brand equity in it, and we're working under CBS, which is a 70-year-old media company with a ton of brand equity. We know how to produce content, we know how to distribute it. But there are tons of new ways to produce content, new ways to produce video, new ways to produce text content, and, con and producing content is very, is very expensive, as you all know. And so were we ready to make the investment, or should we explore different ways to produce content and distribute it? We'd seen a, a number of entities try machine language translation. We, we saw that that had kind of a mixed effect on the audience. And we knew that with CNET, all the brand equity that we'd built up in the 20 years, it was really important for us to respect that equity as we went into, into um, producing content for this other audience. And on the English language side, we've always kind of said, look, no matter what kind of content you're producing, whether it's polls and quizzes, or it's video and, and uh, slideshows, or it's reviews and news, the audience is smart and they can see through those cracks. So if you take shortcuts, or you do things in an inauthentic way, the audience will see that. And so for us, even though it took quite an investment, um, it was important for us to actually hire a team of journalists who could translate content and who could produce original content for CNN in Espanol. So we hired a team of journalists who could be full-time addressing the audience, connecting to the audience, making a relationship with that audience <clears throat> by producing original content in Spanish. And yet, we couldn't just hire native Spanish speakers because you have, to, on the one hand, you have to hire native Spanish speakers in order to be authentic in the language, but the Spanish language is only part of the equation. The other part of the equation is the language of technology. And technology is this, this complex language that I spoke about earlier. And, and so you had, we had to find people who were both authentic Spanish speakers and authentic uh, uh, speakers in, in the vernacular of technology. <clears throat> and so for us, it made a lot of sense to hire those uh, original Spanish speakers to present content that would, in some cases, not even appear on the English language side, but only on the Spanish language side. And in some cases, they would, they would actually take where relevant content that was produced in English that would be addressable to the Spanish language audience, but then they would, put, they would take it and they would humanize it. They would culturally translate it. Because the audiences that speak Spanish in the, in the US are, are different and they're, and they're very different uh, community to community. So you need to have an authentic voice and somebody who can take that original content produced in English and can culturally translate it in a way that speaks to the audience organically. And so we had, we had the basic rules down, and we had the fact that we, we knew we had to embrace an uninterrupted experience on multiple platforms, and we had to be real with the audience. But then like any other business, we knew that we had to prepare for the speed of change. So with the speed of change, 
Things change all the time, as you guys know. We're all in digital. The change is ongoing. It continues to change day, day in and day out. And the way that, the way that technology changes uh, in, the, in the delivery of content um, and the way that content is created is, is impressive. So how do you prepare for that? How do you prepare for the fact that uh, the platforms will change or the way that we monetize will change or the way that uh, the content is distributed to change? How do you compete with 300,000 YouTube videos uploaded every single day? For us at CNET and CBS, we focused on, the, on premium quality content and delivering premium quality content that truly reached the audience as a differentiator to stand above the volume of content that was produced every day. But not only from a content perspective, but how is the audience going to consume that content and how different is that? And are you ready for the change in that? Will the audience start consuming content in augmented reality? Will they start consuming content in virtual reality? Are you ready with non-flash environments or the fact that iOS 9 will have mobile ad blockers in it? Is your business ready for that? Or are you developing assets in vertical video to take uh, advantage of the enthusiasm for vertical video? These were all things and questions that we had to ask ourselves at the beginning and through the, every stage of the ma uh, maturity of the pro uh, product that we were building in Spanish. But not only did we have to be prepared <coughs> with the way that content was being developed and produced and the way that content was being distributed and consumed by the content, the, con the consumers, but we had to be prepared to, uh, to embrace the way that consumers change, the mercurial nature of those consumers. So for instance, on the CNET la English language side, shopping is huge. We have all of these tentpole events. We have Mother's Day and Father's Day and back to school and grads and dads and we have holiday. And we are, we're very good at producing content and packaging it up and distributing it to take advantage of that because our goal and our mission is to educate consumers through that purchase consideration process. We're very good at helping people discover what they, what they need and what they want and making them feel confident about making those decisions. So for us, shopping on the English language side is an important part of the process. And so it made absolute sense for us to embrace Semana Santa, which is the week before Easter, which is a, a, a shopping season, and on the Espanol side, on the Spanish language side, have the original journalists do a bunch of content about shopping. And so they did about 30 pieces of content, and they produced this content, and they packaged it up well, and they, and they distributed it just along the same formula on the, uh, on the English language side, and not one of the 30 pieces of content actually made it into the top 20 pieces that week. So the lesson that we learned was, look, just because it's a cultural phenomenon doesn't mean that it is gonna, it's gonna translate digitally and just because it works on the English language side doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna work on the Spanish language side. By the same token, if you look at, say, sports and technology and you think about the English language side, the English language audience is, is not that interested in sports and technology. They're not interested in sports celebrity or how the helmets are made. It's very, it's a, uh, it, it's uh, very unusual when, when they kind of spike up around sports uh, content on the English language side. But the passion that U.S. Hispanic communities have for sport and soccer in particular made them a great audience for, uh, for the merging of technology and sport as it related to the World Cup and any kind of soccer or sporting content. And that just showed us that, look, just because it doesn't work on the English language side doesn't mean that it's not going to work on the Spanish language side. And so you have to be open to kind of that change and the difference in the way that, that things change from what you're used to today and how it's going to change tomorrow from a programming perspective as well as a content development perspective and a distribution perspective. And so, look, they asked me to come up with three conclusions. And I said that there's, there have been a lot of uh, really good Spanish language efforts that have gone out there and, and a few that maybe have missed the mark a little bit. For us, on the, on the CNET and CBS side, it's always been uh, about the language and the authenticity of that language. And I don't mean just the Spanish language, right, but also the language of technology. And so we needed to, we, we always wanted to make sure that we were going to be authentic as Spanish speakers and we were going to be authentic as speakers in the language of technology. So if there were three things that I would take away from this uh, presentation, it would be that you have to know your vertical and be an expert in that vertical and know your audience and what they want out of it. And that you have to deliver that message with speed and authenticity. And then you have to be prepared for that velocity of change. And I think that is really what makes the, uh, 
entire operation potentially successful. Um, that's the end of my presentation. I wanted to bring up Brian um, for a couple of questions Thanks. here. Oh, and thank you guys very much for the time. Thanks, Mark. That was yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, that was great. Uh, unfortunately, it went right up to the right, oh, up, right, to up, the, the right up to the end, so we don't have time for questions. But Mark, right. you'll, you'll be around. Right? I will. All yeah. right. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.